In this video, we'll discuss how to compute the so-called partial derivatives of a function of several variables. When we talk about a multivariable function, it doesn't really make sense to talk about the derivative of that function. Derivative with respect to what? We've got multiple variables, and so we could theoretically take a derivative with respect to any number of them. So in order to think about how we're going to approach this problem, let's go back to thinking about what a single variable derivative meant. The derivative dy dx is approximated by the idea of delta y over delta x. In other words, if x changes a little bit, how much does y change? So we can use this idea to approximate derivatives of a multivariable function. So in this example, we have the heat index, which is a function of two variables, the humidity percentage and the temperature. If we look at the point i of 75 comma 88 equals 103, that tells us that the heat index is 103 when the humidity is 75% and the temperature is 88 degrees. So what if we wanted to know the rate at which the heat index is changing at that point? In the single variable case, we would change our input variable by a little bit and see how much our output changed. Well, in this case, we have two input variables, so let's try changing the humidity a little bit. If we go from a humidity of 75 to 80, the heat index goes from 103 to 106. So that's a change in our i variable of 3 divided by our change in our h variable of 5. So thinking just like delta y over delta x, in this case our change in i over change in h is 3 over 5, which is 0.6 degrees per percent humidity. So that's essentially a derivative, but it's a derivative with respect to h. We call this a partial derivative because we chose to take the derivative only with respect to h, not with respect to the temperature. So we've got a fancy notation here. Instead of a d for derivative, we use sort of a curly d. This is actually called a del. So del i del h evaluated at the point 75 comma 88 is approximately 0.6 degrees per percent humidity. So this is called a partial derivative with respect to h. We can use the same reasoning to approximate the partial derivative with respect to t. Instead of changing h by a little bit, we keep h the same and change t a little bit. That gives us a change of about 3 degrees per degree of temperature. The heat index went up by 6. When our temperature went up by 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3 degrees per degree of temperature. So the idea behind partial derivatives is that we leave all of the variables except one fixed. And then we take the derivative with respect to that variable. So del i del h represents the rate at which the heat index changes if the temperature stays constant and only the humidity is changing. So now let's think about how we do this when we actually have a formula for our function. So in this example, we want to compute del f del x. So what we're going to do is treat the y as a constant and take the derivative with respect to x. So in this case, I've colored in red the actual variables, the x's here, and we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. And everywhere we see a y, we're going to treat it like it was just a constant number. So in this case, the derivative of x squared y cubed is simply 2x times y cubed, just like the derivative of 10x squared is 10 times 2x. The y cubed is a constant. Similarly, the derivative of xy is 1y, and the derivative of 4y squared is 0, because 4y squared is being treated as a constant here. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is 2xy cubed plus y. Similarly, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, del f del y, turns out to be 3x squared y squared plus x minus 8y. So again, we're treating the x's as constants and taking the derivative with respect to y. We've got a bunch of different notations for the partial derivative. We've already seen the del notation. So if we've got some function z equals f of x, y, we could talk about the partial derivative of f with respect to x, or the partial derivative of z with respect to x. Those are really the same thing. And we also will sometimes write it with this subscript notation. f sub x is just another way of writing the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Now if we want to evaluate that partial derivative at a particular point a comma b, again we've seen a couple of these notations before. This vertical line with a subscript a comma b, that's a bit of a clunky notation, but that's our notation for plugging that point into that partial derivative. A little bit of a cleaner notation is using the subscript and the parentheses of a comma b. Again, taking an analogy from what we did with one variable, we can take multiple derivatives of the same function. So if, for example, we took the partial derivative of f with respect to x and then took the partial derivative of that with respect to x again, 
we get a second ordinal partial derivative. And we write that as del squared f over del x squared, or f sub xx. Similarly, we can take the partial derivative of f with respect to y twice. That gives us f sub yy. We can also take what's called a mixed second order partial derivative, where we take this partial derivative with respect to y and then take the partial derivative with respect to x. So del squared f del x del y, or f sub y x. Or we can take that mixed partial derivative in the other order, so f sub x y. Let's talk just briefly about f sub x y versus f sub y x. That notation can be a little bit confusing. But if you keep in mind that the subscript is the order in which we take the partial derivative. So f sub x y means first take the partial derivative with respect to x, and then the partial derivative with respect to y. But f sub y x means to first take the partial derivative with respect to y, and then take the partial derivative with respect to x. The good news here is that there's something called Schwartz's theorem that tells us that for pretty much any function that you'll ever encounter, the mixed second order partial derivative is the same regardless of the order in which we do it. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to x and then the partial derivative with respect to y, that will almost always be the same as doing it in the other order.